just getting ready to go to, it's called a crop swap. It's at this place called Abbey Farm Flowers. They are like a pick your own flowers place in the village. And they also do um, funeral flowers, which is great. I've got this bad boy and I've got my cup. So I'm gonna get some coffee and hopefully have a good time. Now let me get my sketchbook. There's a picture of me. Baby me. It got damaged in the flood. Born, I'd say about three months ago. Four I months saw ago. them when they were babies. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if... Well, normally, the, that's the... Where's the male? That's the male. Okay. So I'd say the ones with the bigger, see it? The ones not got the thing on that? Like, yeah. she's female, he must be male. I see. I think it's done by the front. Oh, the little big there, yeah. bump. bump at the front. I just thought, wow, they're so big to be the signets. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Thank <laughs> Fantastic. you. Fantastic, they lost two last year, so it's great to have Really? The There's so many. Exactly, You too. Hi, how are you? Fine, Nikki. I brought a zucchini. Could I take some rosemary? Yeah, do, help yourself. And I think it's one big I'll bunch, leave. But you don't have to have it all if you don't want to. Oh, yeah, I won't take it all. I'll leave some. But there's oh, lovely. that. It's a yellow one. Courgette, you call it. I yeah. Guess. Take like. Do you want all of it? Half no, of it? like half maybe, yeah. We're going to go for a little walk because it's really nice out. And there's, there's a new cafe in town called Cherries. And they also have french fries. So, yeah. You ready to go? You're going the wrong way. That's the wrong way, Frey. Let's go over here. Come on. Not much room in here or much light, but I thought we could have a little chat inside the coffin. It's a rainy day and it's very cozy in here in this coffin. Uh, yeah, it just feels cozy and nice and no one, no one would suspect that I'm in here.
I've been at the center a lot working and been around town. I've been to a couple of thrift stores to get some stuff for my Etsy shop. I've had a couple client calls, podcasting, working, vocals. Um, I think I'm a little too relaxed to recount everything. Trying to get my feet off the ground. Is that what the expression is? I wonder how many people have vlogged from a coffin before. Probably not that many. I guess I'll get out now. Oh, still alive. So many of you know that I do end of life meditations, death meditations, and also living funerals, which are kind of intense meditations on mortality. There is a video on my channel about that. So if you're curious about that, uh, go maybe go watch that and i'm actually having a virtual living funeral on the 25th of this month september 25th if you want to check that out i'll put the the registration link in this video's description if you want to join it's 20 pounds per person but i never turn anyone away due to lack of funds so if you have a problem meeting that financial a contribution then just email me and we'll figure something out i was thinking this morning i wanted to share something with you all and that is called the nine contemplations on death these nine contemplations on death come from the 11th century buddhist scholar i'm just gonna read it because i i um have trouble remembering this name atisha dipamkara shrijnana when reviewed regularly, these nine contemplations on death can help us to frame our life within this fact that death is inevitable, that um, everything is temporary and impermanent. So some people contemplate these nine, <laughs> nine points, you know, before meditation. And I really recommend that. I think that even just repeating one of these nine prior to a meditation is really powerful. So I'm going to list these nine contemplations for you now. And I'll also put a link in the description of a good website that you can read these on and go and refer back to. Number one is death is inevitable. No one is exempt. Number two is our lifespan is ever decreasing and every breath brings us closer to death. Number three is death will indeed come, whether or not we prepare for it. Number four is human life expectancy is uncertain and death can come at any time. Number five says there are many causes of death, even habits, desires, and accidents are precipitants. Number six is the human body is fragile and vulnerable. Our life hangs by a breath. Ooh. This is one of my favorite ones. Number seven says, at the time of death, material resources are of no use to us. I like to think about uh, material resources not belonging to anyone. Like we think about, I don't know, whatever, this phone uh, is mine and no one else's and I feel such ownership over it but it can be anything and usually people feel more attached to to important objects like you know photographs or uh, an antique heirloom kind of object but I like to think of of my death in that when you die what happens to those things uh, they just go to someone else or they go to a landfill and so I feel like Everything that I have is just mine right now, or it's not even mine, it's just in my possession at the moment. And that helps me to kind of 
place less importance on the things that are in my life and pay more attention to the experiences and relationships that I am having. Number eight is our loved ones cannot keep us from death. There is no delaying its advent. Number nine is our body cannot help us at the time of death. It too will be lost at that moment. So when and if you're doing this meditation on the nine contemplations of death, there are some words you can speak after each one as well. So I'm just going to read it all together. Death is inevitable. No one is exempt. Holding this thought in mind, I abide in the breath. Our life span is ever decreasing. Each breath brings us closer to death. Holding this thought in mind, I delve deeply into its truth. Death will indeed come, whether or not we are prepared. Holding this thought in mind, I enter fully into the body of life. Human life expectancy is uncertain. Death can come at any time. Holding this thought in mind, I am attentive to each moment. There are many causes of death. Even habits, desires, and accidents are precipitants. Holding this thought in mind, I consider the endless possibilities. The human body is fragile and vulnerable. Our life hangs by a breath. Holding this thought in mind, I attend to my inhale and exhale. At the time of death, material resources are of no use to us. Holding this thought in mind, I invest wholeheartedly in practice. Our loved ones cannot keep us from death. There is no delaying its advent. Holding this thought in mind, I exercise non-grasping. Our body cannot help us at the time of death. It too will be lost at that moment. Holding this thought in mind, I learn to let go. So this is a very powerful meditation that you can try. And again, I'll link it down below to this website where I found this helpful outline. Um, but if you want to do some further research, it's just called The Nine Contemplations on Death. And it's very inspirational to me. It's very helpful to me. And I just thought I want to share that with all of you. So thanks for listening and thanks for being here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.